We are rapidly approaching 10,000 miles on the 23 Canyon, and by now, I've kind of have some opinions on what I like and what I dislike about the truck. I wanted to make the truck more useful for the things that I use it for and figured I'd share it with you guys as well. So because that thing's not done, I'm using this for all of my off-roading and my off-road recoveries. You guys can see I use the truck. Get all muddy, this is the last snow and mud recovery. Well, the truck looks pretty stock and that's because I've removed the parts from the truck because what's the point of an install video if I've already got the parts installed? So today I took them out so that I can show you guys the two parts that I made and if you guys happen to use your truck in a way that these two things might benefit you, well, now you know how to install them. So my AT4 only came with one light and that actually works the ditch pods. These are some lights that I got off of AliExpress. If I wanted to add more switches in here, I would have to buy the GM kit and all the buttons would end up down here somewhere. In my opinion, that's a pretty dumb location, so I came up with one better. I've got a video coming up where I'm gonna be comparing two 12 button switch panels, and that is way too much for my needs on this truck. So this little six button from Oxpower is, uh, it'll work just fine. It's a three mode, six button, momentary pulse, on off. It's great, but I need a spot to put it, and I figured I'd put it right here on the defrost vent. Initially, I designed a little adapter to fit right here on my canyon, but the problem is steering wheel gets in the way. One of the reasons that swayed me into buying an AT4 was the interior. Now the Colorado interior is different and it does not have a little spot right there to adapt a switch panel. Quite literally, just take some sort of panel tool and pop that puppy out. It'll take some force, but this guy will pop right in there. Now, I 3D printed an adapter for this, and I think I might actually print some more for you guys. And I'm using this little ram mount to attach to the one inch ball on the defrost vent adapter. Now, there are some sellers on Etsy that print these, but since I've got a printer, and I know how to model stuff, I just made some for myself. But essentially, this little ball ram mount fits on the one inch ball, and uh, you have your switch panel right there. That's not going anywhere. I can already hear you guys in the comments. What do we do with the wire? Well, I've got it wrapped around the back here to miss the defrost vents. Yes, the defrost still works for your side window. And we're gonna pull this panel off and tuck the wire up inside there. We might have to move a little bit of plastic, probably a little cut of the plastic hidden up in the corner so that uh, we can pass the wire through without it uh, getting pinched. Again, with the panel tool here, we're just going to be real gentle with this. Whoa. If you do plan to put a phone charger or some sort of a switch panel here, tucking it right under here and running your wires down through the dash is pretty much the best way that I've figured out. I haven't really felt the need to just yet, but you can notch the back of this little corner here so that when you tuck this up in here, it won't pinch your wire. Honestly, it doesn't seem to do that too bad and uh, your wires nice and tucked away. That's the defrost vent ball mount. Let's move on to the dash grid. This is a little bit easier to see from the passenger side here, but this little cubby right here is good for maybe some sunglasses, maybe some pens, maybe your keys. Hold please, my wife is short. First and foremost, the phone charger is pretty garbage and even though I've plugged in a cigarette lighter USB adapter to my phone not a big fan of all the wires so I wanted to put a phone mount on the top of the dash here behind the radio and I want a 360 camera with making content I want to be able to have a nice crispy video out the front of the truck as well as maybe some video in cab say when I'm on the radio or just talking to you guys uh, throughout that video, I'd like to be able to have a stationary camera on the dash, ready to go. And uh, I don't really have anywhere to put it right now. I guess I could clip it to the radio somehow, but I don't want to blow up the screen. I don't even want to know how much that's going to cost me. I came up with this. Basically, it is a amps standard grid. So pretty much any mounting ball mount, phone mount on the market that utilizes the AMPS standard 
It's a 30 by 38 millimeter square bolt pattern. We'll fit into this with your standard M-Lock style attachment hardware. I'll have a link below to what I'm talking about. Essentially, this will allow me to almost mount anything that I can think of. Phone mounts, GPS, uh, GoPro mounts, my little 360 camera mount, whatever I want right behind the dash, and it's really solid back behind the radio. And I'll show you guys how to install it if you decide to buy one. I'm having to get creative with the camera angles here, but essentially we want to take the stock tray out, and the best way that I've found is just kind of get into here with uh, one of these little tools and lift up the three little clips. There you go. Really simple install. We're going to remove the factory screws from the left and the right side. We're going to leave the middle one and we're going to reuse those to mount the new tub into the dash. From there, drop your screws into the holes, tighten them down. It's that simple. If you guys don't want to put the USB power point under the grid here, you're going to have to fast forward and uh, see how to install this. It's five screws, pretty self-explanatory, but uh, I have made a provision under that tub for a Carling style uh, USB, dual USB plug. And uh, I'll put a link to the one that I've got. I got blue backlit just because the truck's blue and I got lights under the dash and stuff. Um, but you guys can get whatever color you want or no color at all. And uh, we're gonna show you guys how to wire that up before we move on to installing the top of the grid. This little guy here is a carling style or carling size uh, hole for the switch panel and it fits down inside a little cutout that I designed into the tray. This little rectangle here is what you guys need to cut out. Basically, we're just gonna trace it with our knife and cut that little square out till the USB fits in that little square. I made it this way so that if you guys did not want to put a USB charger in your dash grid, you didn't have a gaping hole in the bottom of your tray. So don't cut yourself, please. Don't need that on my conscience. Now this is a three strand, just what I had. Maybe someday I might be able to use it for something else, but uh, honestly, two strand is fine because we just need a power and a ground for the little USB plug. Now we've got USB power inside of the tray. I'm even gonna up the uh, usefulness and use a dual USB-C to single USB-A adapter to maximize the amount of chargers that I've got on the top of this grid. We're gonna start the install off by removing the glove box. Basically tilt it down, pinch it together, and then it'll unhook. What we're gonna end up doing is reaching up under the dash towards the radio as we send the new USB power wire down through uh, the abyss and then we're gonna pull it out the back so we can reach the fuse box that's under the passenger kick panel. Real simple, really. Now I've got long arms for this, but there's no reason for you guys to uh, pull the radio out or anything like that. Just fish it down till you feel it. Pull it through, kind of like a noodle through your nose and your mouth. All right, let's get the floor mats out the way. If you guys watched my aux button video, you'll know that this kind of broke in the process and I really haven't ever put it back. It sits just fine with the little plastic welds busted and uh, honestly, I don't mind it because I don't sit over here ever. You guys will see this white wire here. It's going out to the relay. This is the little blue and white wire for the aux button. This wire here is subject to change. I think the power module that I've got isn't playing nice with the start stop system. So I'm gonna actually change that out here pretty soon. I've got another one from Wolfbox coming and that video will be up in the card. Up, up there, there, there. So I'll put a card for the dash cam video but that's subject to change. I'm just gonna pull off about a foot of insulation here, uh, the jacketing, just so I have enough room to really put this ground point pretty much anywhere. Honestly, six or eight inches probably be more than enough, but we're gonna find ourselves a solid ground point and 
use that here in a second. Turns out last night when I went to go find the fuse tap, I left my floor mat on the tonneau. Well, I drove the wrong direction this morning to go and find it, and I realized that I have a dash cam that faces backwards, and I went back through the files and found out where it fell off. Well, I now have my floor mat back, so let's get on with the install. Now, some of you may not be as fortunate as I to have a Summit Racing warehouse literally two miles away, but I'll put an Amazon link to those for you guys to track down so you don't have to uh, be without one of these guys. Fuses 14, 15, 18, and 19 are all ignition switched. So there's a couple problems with this. 14 and 18 are a three blade fuse that I've never seen before until owning this truck. 15 and 19 are the mini two fuses but they're right next to each other and I'm concerned that if we orient the fuse tap the wrong way, we're gonna be dependent on one fuse to power the other one instead of pulling off of the hot leg or the positive leg of the fuse bus. So we kinda of need to figure that out before we go too much farther. We've got F12, which is powered when the ignition is off. So I'm actually gonna be using that one for the passive for the dash cam. 15 is next to it. Um, and that is ignition powered and 19 is next to that also ignition powered now the usb plug that i've linked in the that i have installed here in the truck is a three point something amp fuse it can only output three amps so that's not a big deal what is a big deal though is the way that these fuse taps this is the one for my dash cam and this is the one that i'm going to be tapping into for the usb power now the fuse box powers these fuses off the bottom lug. So if we were to plug it in like this, it would power off of here, go through the fuse and into the accessory that it used to, to power. 19, I think, is the PCM. It's kind of important. And then it powers off of the bottom into the five amp up to the dash cam. Well, that makes sense. But the problem is these two have to be back to back like this. Well, the problem is now we're feeding this accessory through the other fuse and back through there so it's not the most ideal way to do it granted it's only pulling three amps so it shouldn't be a problem but now the load on this is pulling on here so we want to make sure that this fuse here is a five amp and the other one is whatever we pull it out of so that way if anything were to happen this would still pop first but you're adding that load back onto the initial fuse and that could pose a problem. For right now, I think it'll be okay. It's only pulling three amps, so we probably should be just fine. So we're gonna pull out the 15 amp that's in the fuse 15 slot here. There we go. That's gonna get put in the bottom slot of the fuse holder. And I just need to get a five amp fuse for this, which I should have gotten at Summit this morning. I happened to take a look at the fuse box here in the engine bay and turns out all these little towers here are for spare fuses. Well, GM was kind enough to give us a five amp fuse and that's what I'm going to use for the USB fuse tap. Cool, there we go. So I put the 15 in the bottom slot, which is where it's going. It's gonna back feed to this five amp that's gonna power the USB plug, no big deal. I can get it in there. Cool, and this is gonna go into the fuse box this way. I've got the dash cam one in 19 facing this way. So it's feeding properly on the dash cam one, but backwards on this one. This is a 15 amp. If the USB ever pulls too many amps, it's gonna work, but now we're daisy chaining the 15 miscellaneous, whatever miscellaneous is, and the USB on the same fuse. I'll just have to get this crimp to my little red wire and I'll show you guys where I ground it out. I'm a rebel, I use the red crimp on the blue terminals. Comment below if you're like me. Before you hook up the ground or the fuse tap, we need to tuck this wire up in here somewhere. I'm gonna end up going over some of these little supports back here. You guys won't be able to see it, but there's two little supports right there. Drag our wires over top of that so it's out the way. That way we can have our, all of our wires next to the glove box here out of the way. I'm gonna feed our ground out the side because we need that. I'm gonna feed our fuse top out the bottom over here somewheres. 
we're going to tuck our power wire under there and our ground is going to go up to this little screw right here where I've got my dash cam grounded just like that. 7 mil, tighten it up, we're grounded. So we got our dash cam plugged into 19. This guy goes into 15. 19 is going, fuse tap is going up. 15, the fuse tap is going down. Just tuck all of our wires back and we'll go see if this thing works. Also, don't forget to put away your fuse map, your glove box, floor mats, kick panel, all that. Just make sure you dump everything out of your glove box before you attempt this on camera because this is an absolute joke. Put all this junk back in here. I guess Narcan's not a joke. Oh, do you guys carry Narcan? At least I didn't have these on the uh, tailgate. I actually have them in the back seat, which is probably where I should put the floor mats next time. This plastic interior is so soft and uh, I tried to plastic weld it back together when I was doing the dash cam video and that didn't work. So I saw them welded it, it's nice and tight. You guys ever have an issue with your kick panel and whatnot, not uh, staying intact, just get yourself some, some ABS plastic glue and it'll uh, go right back together. Get this guy tucked under here. Just gonna do that one. All that's left now to do is put our mounting screws back in, two seven mils, tighten down nice and snug. There's no sense in going super, super, super tight. With that all buttoned up, we should be able to turn the truck on and that will light up. So we should have no power going to the USB until we turn the truck on. So we're gonna put our foot on the brake. You guys should be able to see that USB is glowing blue now. So if I turn the truck off, the USB should go off at the same time. As you can see, it's there. It's off. So we now know that it's wired properly. This style USB plug is too long. So if you have something like this, it will actually interfere with the grid and actually won't allow you to install it. This style USB will fit because it's a lot shorter. I also have three different lengths of USB for the different types of things that I want to hook up here. So be mindful of what you want to hook up here and how long you might need of a USB cable. I'll leave some links below to cables like this so that you guys can select what length works for you. Those are affiliate links and they do help support the channel. Amazon gives me a couple cents every single time you guys click on one or buy something and it really helps me bring you guys great videos like this. A couple of cool features that I included in this is I wanted to make sure that these USB-C connectors and lightning cables fit through the grid. Also, all of the hardware, these five screws that I include in the kit, don't interfere with any of the mounts. So if you ever wanted to change a mount or something like that, you don't need to take the grid off in order to do so. All right, we got the short one popping up. What do you guys think here? I'm gonna scooch it over here on the end. And I want the other one for my phone. That'll go right there. I'll screw these guys down. I'm blown out. Phillips head screwdriver. I can't find my good one because I never put my tools away. The way I designed this is to use these M lock screws and you just uh, line them up. And you take your, you put them all sorts of places. Take your screw. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe I can zoom into it. But as you tighten it up, it twists and locks into place. Nice and tight. Get my 360 camera to mount up here. And so now we got power for the camera. Just like that. I recently got this phone mount arm thing to just use in the shop to be able to take videos and whatnot for you guys, little shorts and whatnot. Well, it turns out I kind of like it and I want to use it in the truck here to hold the phone just above the radio. 
I think it's a killer spot. It's a great use of the dash grid. And so I'm gonna 3D print a quarter 20 base to work with the M-Lock system, the AMPS standard 30 by 38 millimeters, and uh, plug that into the other side and the other wire out of the USB plug will go to the phone. It'll end up looking something kind of like that. So, somewhere's, somewhere's right there. I can probably fit <laughs> another radar detector or another, uh, another camera or something in here. Um, I got all sorts of opportunities to, to mount stuff. Get you guys off the handheld mode, put you on the gimbal. It's nice and smooth footage, finally. Sorry guys for all the handheld stuff today. If you guys have any questions regarding what I've got going on with the truck, I do have a 10,000 mile review video that I'll have linked above and on the end screen. Also, if you guys have any ideas for modifications or video topics, feel free to comment below. I do want to start working on my Colorado here pretty soon. And uh, obviously I've got no shortage of trucks. I've got four Colorados and Canyons at the moment. So in various states of being built or unbuilt for that matter. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate every one of you guys sticking through the videos to this point. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.